Hello everyone, my name is Christian Schost and I'm the product manager for simulators at AV Simulation. Today we're going to see how the digital continuity is driving the evolution of our range of simulators. Our simulators are run every day in hundreds of innovative projects and on all continents. They are used by car manufacturers who experience the model of the cars which we will see in the streets next month but also by researchers focusing on the strategies of drivers and passengers in totally new solutions of transportation. So, and even if there might not even be a driver in the cars tomorrow, we, we, we can say that the human is still in the loop, as Mr. Chevrier explained it earlier. And our simulators must be fitting our clients' needs to bring them efficiency every day and bring the users into the experiments. In a very innovative and competitive market, the research and development projects are at the heart of our client strategies. They are critical and implicate the agendas and budgets for years for both the companies and laboratories. The market is evolving at a fast pace and no one wants to be left behind. So the concept of digital continuity emerged as a necessary optimization of the processes to help our customers. To explain it quickly, we, we can say that digital continuity is a way to make better decisions, which is, of course, a critical point in, in the field of innovation. And it might be a little bit tacky, but we go a bit, little bit deeper into, into this. There's also a saying that says that um, a mediocre decision now is better than a good one later. So speed is also at the heart of this concept of uh, digital continuity. No project is run alone in any research lab or company or, or anything. And the productivity is a core element to make sure that we can deliver and you can deliver innovations to the market before the competition. Innovation doesn't come cheap. By cutting down the costs of these projects, our clients afford exploring more directions at the time. Last, leveraging the convergence of models is providing more accuracy in the evaluations our customers can do. These aims are somehow all interconnected. Simulation in general is already used to pursue the same targets. We will see how exactly it is achieved with driving the loop simulators. And to do this, I'm going to use a very well-known diagram showing the V-cycle and the development cycle of a product or a service. So this diagram is probably oversimplified. It's been widely detailed for product development, service development, and any kind of project. And whether it's for academic or industrial research, uh, it's been applied and reshaped. I will not detail it today, but I would like to use it to illustrate two different dimensions of the digital continuity for users of simulators. Our projects are obviously all different. The, the focus point can either be on a very specific ADA system or on the driving experience of the vehicle dynamics of a new full vehicle model. And this is the target um, of, of the project. And then as the project goes on, the project team will detail and define and refine all of these design elements and go deeper into the definition of the solution. After that, on the assailing side, the validation steps carried out uh, to ensure that the solution fulfills the specifications are shown and then we can validate them step by step with a small detailed unit and then larger with subsystems and the whole system and at the end the system is brought to users for the final validation of the expected features and performances so we can see that covering the whole cycle for a project does take a lot of time and money all the associated costs need to be to be put on the table before we can actually meet the user and validate that we did reach the target. So this is of course where validation in simulation comes up when we, we, we can see how the uh, features and performances are, are met. Then we can shorten this cycle and then we can meet the users before. And another way to illustrate it is to have this shortened loop. So we can do it with drivers or with users. And this is where we, we see this shortened cycle. But then actually we can make it happen at every cycle, um, a small sub-cycle or small step in the design um, phases. 
when continuity actually happens, uh, we, we can see that we have different validation steps and that can be happening in, in different months or even different years. The digital continuity can be seen here. The different validation steps can be based on the same validation ground by adopting homogeneous testing procedures and content and processes. The, the members of the project can ensure that the different teams are talking the same language. We can say that this is the one dimension of the digital continuity applied to projects. It would be the digital continuity in validation procedures. But there's another dimension for, 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 for this digital continuity in the project. We can see it in basically any step of the V cycle. When we look precisely at any of these, uh, we, we, let's imagine that one project team is trying to prepare a new driving session to validate one concept. Humans are unpredictable, and this is why they need to be involved in the project as soon as possible. But they are also curious and a little bit stable. Um, even if you ask a driver not to pay attention to one detail, it might not work. All the aspects of the experience of the driver will be taken into account in their behavior, and this is what we are analyzing. So these aspects include all the cues provided to the driver by the simulators, whether they are visual, auditory, dynamics or anything. When conducting driver in the loop experiments, you cannot easily hide parts of the driving task. You cannot hide it in the blind spot of the human driver because they might actually just look exactly at it. So even if one team is focusing on the design of a smart steering wheel, the sound of the engine or the behavior of the, the pedestrians in the surroundings may affect the results. So it's really difficult to say, look at this, but don't look at that. And this applies even for aspects which are not directly connected to the project in progress. If you run a motorsport simulation to optimize the vehicle model with Calas, the quality of the visual and sound renderings might seem a little bit less re relevant. But if one of them is missing in a driver in the loop simulation, the results will be depreciated. And it's even more valid for candid drivers, where whereas drive people or drivers who are used to driving on your simulators can learn to pay less attention to some parts of the simulation. But then drivers listen, look, and they take all of these inputs. We need valid and up-to-date up data for and models to, to prepare such an experiment. Any offsets in the content used for these experiments will end with a less trustable result. For one given project, the other areas of expertise might be or might look out of their focus zone, but are significant when the driver is actually doing his job of driving in a simulator. So it is crucial to, to ensure that all of these models and contents used to build the simulation experiments are valid and updated. So if we translate these into any actual project, it might be these CAN models, the, the, the model, the very detailed model, the software, anything. All of these are taken into account by the driver and you cannot ask the driver not to look at it. So they don't really belong to the project team's expertise sometimes. And then being able to embed them and integrate them from other parts or the companies or even research labs which are not in the companies or anything, this is critical and this is the digital continuity in content. So you can use valid up-to-date data, even if it doesn't belong to your, from, to, to your company and use them in simulation. So we can say that we, we saw the, these two dimensions of the digital continuity. Uh, we saw the one in the validation procedures and the one in the content. And being able to use it is how you can ensure that project is on your, the, the, the right track. But one project never comes alone, and we can see it with only one V cycle today, but there will always be different V cycles simultaneously or one step at a time. So this is where the third dimension of the digital continuity is happening, because we have the one in the validation procedures, we have the one in content, but also the one in time. We need to make sure that what you build today can be reused tomorrow. So how does it actually translate into driver in the loop simulators? So of course, the driver is looking at something and is feeling something. And the software running at the heart of the simulator is crucial. It needs to be 
possible to, to, to connect to different fields of expertise. Then the cockpit, whether it is real or virtual, must also bring all this flexibility to, to adapt to any kind of driving simulation scenario. And it is true both for the whole car cockpit architecture, but also for the components inside the cockpit. So much software is running in today's vehicles, then the simulators must be giving this access to all the virtual brain of the vehicles. And then all the software inside the cockpits must be accessible and, and, and tunable. And then simulators can be a huge investment and they need to be able to, to provide this adaptability to all the use cases you are going to cover today and tomorrow. So these aspects are becoming more present in the design of our simulators. And then let's look at our last generation of, uh, of simulators. Then it, it's a huge challenge to, to combine all the specifications into one multifunctional simulator with the highest level of immersion. And th this simulator will be able to cover all the use cases uh, in the world. And this is a dream, but I think we are actually touched that dream uh, and we will see how we, with the latest generation of simulators. Our range of products is also including some more dedicated and specific tools. So if we look at the first ones, the, the, the one for all simulators or all in one simulators are the most multifunctional ones and they provide the users with very open software architecture. We can exchange the cockpits. So how can you get more versatility when you can just exchange the car? You can get the highest level of rendering for the visual dynamics, sounds, vibrations. And then this is how you can ensure that you get this continuity in the validation steps because you can integrate really pre-concepts at the beginning of the project down to very detailed models at the end. This is these continuity and validation procedures because you can use the same tool for the beginning, middle and end of the project. And of course, continuity in content as we saw it previously because you can integrate data models from any parts of the company or even inside because the software running it is open enough. The smaller simulators also share the same software at the heart um, of course, Scanner Studio. The content created in one simulator can be used in a second one without spending time converting and reinterpreting uh, all, all these models and data because that's non-value. Um, the, the time you spend driving a simulator is, is the key. We also offer a range of optional upgrades for our simulators. Um, these options can help the users to invest more money where it's actually more relevant and more critical. It's possible to use a very compact simulator with the same expert active pedal system as in the most performant driving simulators we, we, we can provide. So this is providing some continuity because you can have the same models or same data or same content in the simulators, the same parts and the same features and performance from a big to a, a smaller compact simulator. This is again continuity. And this is why the last project we are involved in today involve both very big multifunctional simulators, but also smaller, more affordable and more dedicated solutions. The, the, the key is really to fit the needs of the experiments. AV Simulation Supply is the only company in the world capable of offering such a wide range of solutions. For the price of the largest simulator, you can also get 1000 units of the smallest models. We have a rich backlog of simulator usages for all types of activities from academic to industrial customers. So of course, come to us, contact us, reach us so we can share our experience with you and help you build the best strategy for simulation in your company. We, we, we need to make sure that we can deliver the solutions with the cutting edge technologies. We are actually working today on the very exciting products, uh, which we will disclose soon with the optimal ratios between versatility, performances and cost. So come and, come and see us, come and visit our showrooms so we can have some hands on session or we can come and, and, and show you with our virtual booth um, all our solutions in, in your premises. You, you will be able to test our simulators and discover more exciting innovations which are about to come.